Part four, chapter thirty two of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirty two The Great Disruption. The immediate cause of the great disruption in the Church of Scotland in eighteen forty three was the unsuccessful attempt to get rid of the rule of the lay patrons, the right of lay nomination to vacant churches the scotch reformers held lofty views of the independence of the church in all spiritual matters these views were acknowledged by parliament in fifteen ninety two and confirmed by the same authority in sixteen forty nine after the lay fight with episcopacy the revolution settlement of sixteen ninety reasserted with slight modifications the principle of an independent spiritual jurisdiction in seventeen eleven shortly after the abolition of the scottish parliament an act in the british parliament against the most earnest protests of the scotch people restored patronage to its ancient footing at length under the reign of moderatism the church itself became indifferent to the rights of its congregations and suffered in consequence the secessions of erskine and gillespie about the beginning of the nineteenth century however under the influence of the haldane revival determined efforts were begun to shake off the incubus of patronage on the free life of the church these efforts culminated in the veto act of eighteen thirty four by which the general assembly decided that a non-acceptable pastor intruded by a patron on a church should not be installed providing a majority of the heads of families of the parish dissent. in eighteen thirty eight lord kinnanal patron of octorarder presented rev robert young as the minister of that parish the people almost unanimously refused his endorsement the patron carried the case to the civil courts which decided in his favour and instructed the presbytery to proceed to the ordination of mr young the same year the general assembly retaliated by declaring that quote, in all matters touching the doctrine discipline and government of the church her judicatories possess an exclusive jurisdiction founded on the word of god which power ecclesiastical flows immediately from god and the mediator the lord jesus christ and is spiritual not having a temporal head on earth but only christ the only spiritual king and governor of his kirk the decision of the court of session in the octorarder case was confirmed by the house of lords in eighteen thirty nine finally after various petitions and protests a final appeal was made to the english government to redress the grievances of the scotch church which was rejected in march eighteen forty three by a majority of one hundred and thirty five every hope therefore of recovering the ancient status of the church as a self-governing body in matters of her own concern having passed one step only remained on the eighteenth of may eighteen forty three at the meeting of the general assembly in edinburgh and before it was organized dr welsh the moderator arose and read a protest signed by two hundred commissioners that inasmuch as it was impossible any longer to hold a free assembly of the church of scotland it should be quote, lawful for us and such other commissioners as may concur with us to withdraw to a separate place of meeting for the purpose of taking steps for ourselves and all who adhere to us maintaining with us the confession of faith and standards of the church of scotland as heretofore understood for separating in an orderly way from the establishment and thereupon adopting such measures as may be competent to us in humble dependence upon god's grace and by the aid of his holy spirit for the advancement of his glory the extension of the gospel of our lord and saviour and the administration of the affairs of christ's house according to his holy word end quote. it was a sublime moment would these men leave the old church which they loved as their own life its livings manses pulpits professorships when dr welsh had read this statement he bowed to the royal commissioner and walked towards the door dr chalmers and the entire non-intrusion party followed 
the immense crowd outside gave way and with cheers sent them on their way then was organized the free church of scotland more than a third of the clergy and laity of the established church adhered to the new movement on the twenty third of may an act of separation was drawn up in which the signers whose numbers ultimately rose to four hundred and seventy four voluntarily resigned all the benefices they had held and declared them vacant there are few events in the history of the church more heroic than this when some one rushed in upon lord jeffrey with the news what do you think more than four hundred of them have gone out he sprang to his feet and exclaimed i'm proud of my country there is not another land on earth where such a deed could have been done some of the most godly and learned men of the old church took part in this great disruption dr welsh the moderator dr thomas chalmers who carried through a scheme for the evangelization of the poor and lapsed classes of glasgow when he was pastor of the tron church eighteen fifteen to twenty three a scheme which was the forerunner of many similar home missionary operations and who left his professorship of theology at edinburgh eighteen twenty eight to forty three to cast in his lot with the seceders dr thomas guthrie the golden-mouthed preacher dr candish the great debater and leader dr cunningham the eminent theologian robert gordon minister of the old chapel of ease edinburgh robert mcchain one of the most saintly men of modern times mcfarlane buchanan mccosh and many other devoted and high-minded ministers were willing to suffer the loss of all things rather than submit to the dictation of the state in the field of the church the great disruption shook scotland from centre to circumference and its vibrations were felt all over the civilized world churches schools colleges were speedily built all over scotland the english dissenters sent their sympathy and money and by the advice of chalmers a sustenation fund was raised which soon guaranteed a support of one hundred and fifty pounds to each minister the free church became the most aggressive and spiritual body in scotland and has since been an important factor in the religious history of the world in eighteen sixty three negotiations were begun with the united presbyterian church looking towards union thus far nothing has come of this but in eighteen seventy six a union was formed with the reformed presbyterian church all the missionaries of the church of scotland in the foreign field in eighteen forty three including dr wilson of bombay dr duff of calcutta and dr john duncan of pest adhered to the free church which has always claimed to be the legitimate successor of the reformation church End of chapter 32.